And when I say loss, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not talking about just losing a loved one, but I'm talking about losing your job, um, uh, having a, a problem or an issue in a relationship, uh, anything that, that uh, you could consider a loss, financial loss. And um, I'm, I'm hitting you in one single direction tonight. I want you to be thinking about what in my life have I not been healed of? What loss in my life do I still feel pain over? And um, what, what um, and <clears throat> here's the warning I have. If you don't have something like that, I mean, I think there's a good portion of you that will have a loss that comes to mind. But if you don't, don't try to find one and dig it up just because of this message tonight. I don't want to take you there. Are you with me? Okay. But at the end of this, of this service or this message, I want to pray for you. And I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. And if you have a loss that is still affecting your life, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand up. With all eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand up. And I'm going to pray for you. Not, I'm not going to call your names out, but I'm going to, be, I'm going to pray for all of you that acknowledge that, that you do have some loss that you're still dealing with. And uh, there were several things that actually came together to, to uh, inspire me to go in this direction tonight. Uh, of course, the, the, the death of Benny Johnson. And then I also, uh, Jenny and I visited someone this week, and uh, they ended up sharing uh, a loss that, that they had, not, the, not a death, but it was a different kind of relational kind of loss. And um, I, I was kind of, I didn't really know about it, and it kind of surprised me, and it kind of um, touched, touched me. We, we prayed, and, uh, um, and I also, God showed me that we're actually, we're not starting that new series called The Harvest this week, but we are actually have been on track for this uh, message tonight as part of a series that started two, two weeks ago when I preached a message. Y'all may remember it, but you may not too. Uh, regret, worry, or faith. And, uh, we, you know, we talked about some things that are very related to what we're talking about tonight. And then last week, when Rick Prince was here, he talked about uh, no matter what, you have, your losses, your failures, and so forth have been in your life, you're still on God's A plan for your life. No matter what kind of turns and twists that you have made, you're still on God's A plan. I thought that was awesome. I don't know if anybody else did, but uh, <clears throat> um, and so I I think this is the final uh, message in this series on loss. So. <clears throat> You know, this, this, I guess part of the reason that I am so touched by uh, Bill Johnson losing his wife is because of what happened to Jeannie in the fall. Uh, you know, I, it's, it, it does mess you up a little bit and change your perspective when you hear a doctor tell you, prepare yourself 
I don't think your wife is going to last through the night. It, it kind of changed some things uh, in our lives. And uh, I'm glad I didn't have to, to deal with what Bill Johnson is dealing with now, but it, it does kind of wreck you a little bit in that when you hear that. Um, and, you know, we've had three healings in this setting in just the last few weeks. Uh, John Super, his eye was healed, and um, um, Laura was healed of uh, back and uh, abdominal pain, and uh, Patty was, God touched her ears. And uh, one of them, John's eye, was actually confirmed by the Wyoming Department of Transportation. So that's kind of an official healing. But you know what? Even if none of them had been healed, or even if we prayed for somebody like they prayed for Bill Johnson's wife for all that time for her to be healed of cancer, and she didn't, she didn't get healed. God is still good. God is good all the time. It's not dependent on what we see or what we don't understand. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. <clears throat> Would you turn with me to um, Psalm 23? 23. 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And let's, let's look at verse 4 together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I'm just going to stop it right there. For thou art with me. I will fear no evil, well, thou art with me. When we walk in the valley, in the shadow of death, what, what we see is a shadow that is the shadow of death. But as you know, you know, a shadow is not, um, it's not real. I mean, it's just the, um, it's because the sun is, is being blocked by a mountain or mountains. And when you're walking through the valley and you see the shadow of it, but it's not really the reality. It's, it's just a reminder that this life that you're walking through is, uh, it's not always easy. It, it uh, entails loss. It entails even death. But, uh, and, and all of us are going to die at one point unless we're raptured, right? <clears throat> and um, But what that the, the shadow of death represents is something that we don't fully understand. And you might call it a mystery. Um, I may be saying some things, if you listen to, to Bill Johnson's sermon, I may be saying some things that are reflecting something that he said uh, so I just want to make sure I give him 
him credit for that. And uh, uh, and I can't even remember. It's all running together in my head right now. So, but a lot of the things I say may reflect something that he said in that in that sermon. So you're you're walking along, and the and the sun you can't see the sun because it's blocked by the mountain. But when you get um, you know the the mountain won't as you're walking along is not probably not going to always be there. There might be a break between the between the mountains or something, and then the sun shines through, and and you can you can see it. And then you realize what it was that, that you've been hoping for. Your, your hope comes to life because now the shadow is, is gone. It reminds me of uh, Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. One of the first things that Bill Johnson said when he started his sermon was the backslider. You're going to have to listen to this because it's kind of kind of tricky. The backslider judges God by what he hasn't done. I'm going to say that one more time. I, I can see your the wheels turning. The backslider judges God by what he hasn't done. So if one of those three people had not been healed, the backslider would point to that and say, yeah, see, that's God is going to always disappoint you. But uh, what we... What we need in our time of loss is not necessarily an answer. I, you know, I, I think about my relationship with, with my wife. Um, a lot of times she'll come to me and she's got some issue, some problem that she's sharing with me, and uh, she's kind of learned over the years to, to remind me, uh, I, I, don't, I don't need any answers from you. I just need you to be there for me. And uh, I, I've gotten a little bit better at that. I'm, I'm a little slow on the uptake, but uh, she's very patient, and uh, she helps to remind me sometimes. But, uh, and, and that's I think where I'm going with this message tonight is that in your loss, you don't need an answer. You need his presence. You need his presence. And that, that's what, what we need to understand and to um, in our times of loss. We just need to, to, to seek for his presence. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. His presence makes, makes all the difference. So we're not going to always have the answer, but we can always have his presence. This is a quote from Bill Johnson in that, in that message now. Loss is an opportunity to grow down you to stay with me here now. Loss is an opportunity to grow down, to become more childlike. 
the kingdom of God belongs to the children, right? So our losses, our opportunities to grow down and become more childlike. John 12, 12, I mean, excuse me, John 12, 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So in our dyings, in our losses, we have the opportunity to produce much fruit, much grain. And it, it reminds us of the Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our, our sin. And he and the scripture says that he, uh, in, in his death, in his agony, he saw the joy that he was going to experience when he took us into the family because of what his death meant. It meant we could be free from sin and we could have a relationship with him and enjoy his presence. And uh, that hope was always on his heart. And I'm winding, I think I'm winding down now. I've been so, uh, when God, I'll tell you what, and next week I am so prepared. I was so prepared for the, our first uh, message on the harvest. Uh, and I'm looking at notes and scratchings and so forth that I can't even believe I, I wrote. <laughs> so just bear with me here for a second. I'm getting, I think I'm getting close to the end. Let me see if there's anything else juicy here and good that I can serve you up. Related to John twelve twenty four about the, the seed that, that dies, every loss and every disappointment can become a seed that brings increase. And only God can do that. You know, I, uh, I'm reminded of uh, a rather serious uh, time in my life, probably the worst time in my whole life. That's a, that's a lot of years, too, to come settle back on this one little time. But uh, I, had, I in uh, 2005, I, I have uh, a scar going down my chest right here where I was opened up and had open-heart surgery and a quadruple bypass. And that sounds like a terrible thing, and it was, but it was nothing compared to what what followed that in 2007. I had a uh, surgery on my prostate, and something happened in that surgery that shouldn't have happened. And I don't really know how to explain it, except that... Uh, I, I think the the surgeon that did the the, urolog, the urologist that did the surgery to begin with uh, kind of messed up, and uh, I went from that that doctor to another urologist who came about that close to saying that the first guy had messed up, but he wouldn't say it. You know, he said, "I see some stuff that doesn't look right." But he wouldn't say the other guy messed up. But anyway, so I was, he was treating me, and he finally sent me to a, uh, um, 
infectious disease guy. He thought that maybe, maybe I had an infection somewhere deep in my innermost being. <laughs> and uh, I was experiencing uh, pain from you know, about my knees up into my kidneys and just in, my, in the core of my being. And uh, I had, sometimes I would not even hardly be able to uh, focus and keep my, uh, be, keep conscious. Just because of all of that going on, I ended up spending some more time in the hospital and then they sent me to this infectious disease guy and he put a pick line in that was uh, like a, y'all know what that is? It's, it's a tube or something that's in, stuck in you and then someone comes by and puts medicine into it, strong medicine. Went through that, that didn't help. Finally, I got sent to the third urologist, which was in, back in Virginia. This urologist was supposed to be the best one that was available. He was at the University of Virginia, probably about uh, uh, one and a half hours away, maybe something like that. And, uh, <clears throat> and he, he, he told me, it's all in your mind. <laughs> And that's where I was left with it, and uh, that's all he would say. And and uh, I've gotten a lot better, but I still have pain from that. But what's the worst thing about a situation like that is just not knowing what's what's wrong, and just thinking that. God has left me, you know, I just I, I was at the lowest point of my life in Christ at that at that time. And uh, even uh, our fellowship that we were part of at that time, uh, it probably didn't mean it this way, uh, but it came across that way to me. You're no more useful to us because I had a I had a position in the within the fellowship. You're not useful to us anymore. This is what I was hearing, whether it was exactly the, what they meant or not. You're not useful to us anymore. I'm, we're going to find someone to take your place so you don't have to feel like you have to be there uh, if you're not able to or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so it was just a, one thing after the other, you know, and I, I was just, I, I would have just soon died in that period in my life. And, uh, but yet, God used that time of great loss to make some major changes in my life. And uh, I came out of that much stronger as a believer. And he also, that's when, when God moved us into the church that we... Uh, that, that was such a blessing to us before we came to Wyoming. And uh, so um, and that was a long story, but uh, it, it kind of, for some reason, reminds me of a, of a story in the Bible. Uh, I don't know why, it, it, but it does. Uh, Mary took a thing of, of uh, expensive, very, very expensive ointment and took it into where Jesus was having, having dinner. And he and she uh, you know, poured that ointment out. Everybody in the room was probably being very critical of her. But she poured that ointment onto Jesus and she took her hair and she was wiping his feet with her hair and, and this ointment was just filling the, the room with, with a, you know, a great, awesome smell. And the, the, the uh, disciples were all complaining because she was wasting 
such a huge amount of money, that thing was worth um, thousands of dollars, you know, like a year's uh, salary. And she poured it on Jesus. And it is a, when she, when everybody broke up out of that gathering, she is the one that smelled like Jesus. She is the one that smelled like Jesus. Oh. We finish this this up. Let's let's turn to uh, Philippians four six and seven. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And then we're going to pray. <clears throat> and this is hopefully familiar to you guys. I'm kind of hoping that you've all memorized it by now. If not, I hope you'll put that on your list to be memorized. Um, I'll tell you, it is a, a wonderful passage of Scripture. You're laying in bed at night and thinking about something that's bothering you. This is an awesome Scripture for that, for that particular time, or any time, really. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That uh, peace that surpasses all understanding, that's what I'm talking about. In your loss, you, you can't understand what's going on. You don't know why this is happening to you, but the presence of the Lord makes all the difference. You don't have to know what's going on. You don't have to understand or know what the answer to the end game is. As long as he is with us, it makes all the difference. Let's let's do a little uh, declaration with this passage of scripture, and y'all just repeat after me. I will be anxious for nothing. In everything, I will pray with thanksgiving, and I will let my requests. Be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard my heart, will guard my mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, I told you we were, I was taking you to this point here tonight. And I want you just, uh, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads. And then I'm going to ask you to, uh, if, if you have got a loss going on or anything in your life that's um, you perceive as a loss or an issue that you are struggling with, I just, I'm going to ask you to, to just raise your hands. Nobody else will be seeing you. Everybody's going to have their eyes closed. And I'm not going to call your name out or anything. So uh, let's, let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. If you have a loss going on in your life that is still um, uh, causing you pain, would you just 
Raise your hand. Put them down. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone that is still dealing with loss tonight. Lord, I don't pray for the answers. I don't pray for the understanding. I don't pray that we see beyond the mystery. I just pray for your presence, Lord, to come and fill each heart and each mind with your peace and your presence. Lord, we, we thank you for your great love. We thank you that